Hey everybody, we're here at Dane's Coffee. That's one of my favorite brands. I'm here with Paul Jackson. Thank you for joining us right here on Talking Business. We're talking everything coffee, we're talking everything cafes, how to run a business, how to start a business. A great brand, a great legacy, and I'm really excited to be talking to one of the legends of coffee here in Sydney, Australia. Stay tuned. We're talking to an audience that might be working in, and a lot of them are working in saturated markets and competitive markets. For you, and we'll talk about the solutions in a minute, but what, is, what does saturated look like for you right now? Like, what does saturated that look? looks like uh, every 10 cafes that start, eight will fail. Yep. Because there's so much competition. Mm -hmm. And they don't know what they don't know. They do not want to know what they're getting into. Uh, the experienced operators, you can pick out very easily. You know uh, where they're coming from. You know they've already got success under their belt. But then there's the other ones that are coming in new, the other ones that might have had a go and they're having another go. Uh, you can see the inexperience there. And so saturation is uh, those ones that might have been made able to make it work 15 years ago aren't able to make it work now. If they were making it work 15 years ago, if they're not changing, uh, they will fail. Yeah, right. And, and talk to me about competition, because you know, saturated competition, they work side by side, but what's the, what, you know, from a, from a roasting perspective and also from a, a, from a cafe perspective, what's, what's the competitive landscape look like now? Now the competitive landscape uh, where 25 years ago, there was in Sydney especially, uh, five brands. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the cafes, bought the coffee, but they bought the brand mm -hmm. and whatever came with the brand. And it was clear what that brand was. 25 years on, uh, the brands have had to either clean their act up so as that the brand was worth something, uh, but the cafes have recognised those brands and they've steered away from them, so those old brands have had to reinvent themselves. And uh, the contract roasting, uh, so as that they literally said, I don't need your name. I don't need your brand. I think I know enough. I think I can just buy roasted coffee cheaper and a cheaper blend and uh, go out unbranded. What's you know, some advice that you can give to someone who's thinking about starting a cafe around, you know, from your perspective, what do you think is really important? I think if you're starting a cafe, you have to partner with someone who has that brand so that they can leverage that brand. Uh, if they're going into the market just saying, well, I want, um, I want Muriel's coffee to come out of here. I just want to buy a contract coffee, put my label on it and promote myself. Okay, so that's good if you know what you're doing. But if you're just starting it up with no experience, then you're not leaning on anything. You don't have, have anyone to work with. You don't have anyone to mentor you. You don't have anyone to, that's gone down the uh, failure road, the success road, uh, where they could go, where they, and uh, a business mentor, a business coach. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone that's starting up that doesn't go into uh, or a partnership with a business coach, uh, they're not really planning to have much success. I hear what you're saying. Yep. Yep. Who is Dane's Coffee for now? I think Dane's Coffee is for someone who likes the experience of enjoying their coffee. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not just a caffeine hit. It's not just a drug. Mm -hmm. It's uh, something that's going to give them a, uh, that stimulation, uh, but to enjoy the experience at the same time. So as that they're drinking the coffee, they're enjoying the coffee, but, and then they're enjoying the aftertaste when they finish their coffee, and they want another one. And, and talk me through that experience. What's part of that journey? journey? Where does the journey maybe start to where does it finish? Before they're drinking it? Yeah. So before it gets to the cafe? Yeah. Oh, okay, so uh, it starts at the source. Mm -hmm. It starts in Brazil, starts in Ethiopia, starts in Kenya, starts in Costa Rica, or wherever the coffee comes from. And uh, the processing and the growing and all the work that goes into that, which is still uh, a discovery for roasters, mm -hmm. let alone the consumer. Mm -hmm. And so the roasters have been discovering this in the last five or 10 years and they're turning uh, the quality around because they're saying, they're going direct. This is how we do it. This is how we use it. We want to introduce that to you and we want to help you improve your quality. We want to help improve your growing, your processing, the method, the technique and everything so as that uh, we can get a better product here a more consistent product here. And uh, so, roses are going over there, they're working with brokers, 
they either do it direct or they're doing it with the brokers, so is that uh, the brokers are benefiting from the experience that's being taken forward by the roasters and uh, all the experience that the brokers have as well uh, to assist the farmers in not just the quality level but the standard of living, uh, literally giving them clean water, literally, pumps. Um, and so a lot of that's uh, benefiting the third world countries. Everyone's talking about the farms and uh, how disadvantaged they are and how the multinationals and the bigger guys are uh, take, buying up years worth of coffee, but they're not really doing much with the, uh, with the farmers, not really doing much with the quality. It's just a commodity. Uh, so that's changing and that's what specialty coffee has done. Uh, so the, um, going down a bit of rabbit hole, I suppose, but then no, you've got no, the no. Uh, Fair Trade, Main Price Alliance, Oots, UTZ, uh, that uh, are putting a quality control and a measure on uh, looking after the farmers. And, but uh, they need to look after the farmers because they're getting raped by uh, the commodity buyers. Specialty coffee is going in there to help them to get uh, a better yield, maximise the profit that's coming through a better coffee, and specialty coffee in its own right, well, if they're not looking after it and if we're not helping them to look after it and get a better product, then no one's benefiting. That's where it starts. You ask the question, that's where it starts? Absolutely. So that's where it starts that's it. and it's still getting better. And uh, the different processing, they used to be wash, semi-wash natural. It's a whole other story of what that means, but uh, then now there's macerated coffee, then there's all the different processing of different uh, fermentation methods, the different fermentation periods, on, off, dry, go on forever. And uh, not that I can even give you a full description of that because it's, it's a whole other specialty. And so uh, that is uh, being reformed and uh, so the farmers are being able to put a better product out on that specialty level. Now the specialty levels, my number is only 5%, my 5% of the commodity market. Most of the market is, I'll use the McDonald's, 7-Eleven, number one, number two in the change, and they've got uh, the majority of the coffee wrapped up because they've got the, mm -hmm. the flow, they've got the market, they've got uh, the spread. Uh, but the way they're growing it is saying and using specialty coffee. But they're not about specialty coffee. But they're using it. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. And it's like their marketing people is just like, how can we use it more? Because there's no regulation and you can call the lowest commodity coffee that's out there specialty coffee. No one's going to know, no one's going to challenge you because it's just been polarised to the point where, what is specialty coffee? It doesn't even mean anything anymore. And you can use it in other industries, but you know, we're in the coffee industry, specialty coffee. Okay, let's use that and uh, let's call ourselves that, uh, the false profits. And... <laughs> All of a sudden, you've got uh, those people pushing specialty coffee. It's not specialty coffee. How does it benefit you? How do you get that experience? Uh, where our market comes from, it's educating them, giving them awareness, exposing it, and letting the, letting the customer choose. Uh, the convenience uh, is just so convenient when they go to the drive throughs or when they just stop over at 7-Eleven. That's just too attractive to them. Uh, so that's that part of the market, but uh, what I've been trying to do ever since I've been in business is just uh, provide a product that is enjoyable. So from, from a cafe's perspective, your element is a key part of that element and your branding is a key part of that element and the story and the experience. How do I make a decision about choosing something that I might like on the website? Beautiful question, okay. So what we've tried to do is in the branding, yep. uh, build in a language. Yep, yep. So is that, uh, to, to go to the most simple one is the tribes. Mm -hmm. Chocolates and caramels, traditional roast profile. Um, nuts and spice, sort of in the middle. And then you've got uh, fruits and berries at the end. Now fruits and berries is a modern flavour. Mm -hmm. The chocolates and caramels are traditional flavour. And then you've got everything in between. So we've got the nuts and spice. Now, there's no communication other than uh, it's strong, it's weak, it's sour, it's bitter, uh, it's, it's general, it's vague, doesn't really communicate anything. Uh, and so what you're tasting in and what you can taste in coffee is, uh, is more or there's almost double the flavours that you have in wine. That's how many flavours wow. that there are in coffee. 
And so you can be tasting the cherries, you can be tasting the dried fruits, you can be tasting chocolates and different types of chocolates, cocoa chocolate, uh, mild chocolate, milk chocolate, um, bitter cocoa, and different levels just of chocolate. And then you've got all the fruits and all the um, citrus. Uh, so we try to be very, very clear and specific on if we're tasting a tangerine or a mandarin or a lime. Uh, so is that, okay, when I'm going to taste this, am I going to taste that? Well, if you're not, then <laughs> maybe we'll have to work on uh, the brewing method. Yes. Uh, the cleaning of the machine, which is all part of it. Uh, the consumer has evolved. Uh, we've been trying to sort of do that for 25 years, so is that they can actually taste the things that we're tasting when it's brewed properly, when it's true to profile. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, the language and the communication that we've put on the website, uh, knowing that you can't taste the website, you can't taste uh, through uh, the social media, uh, you have to actually buy the beans. Uh, but we try to have it as clear uh, with our language, uh, so as that you can uh, look at, okay, I like chocolates and caramels. Fruits and berries in coffee? I can't even imagine that. And so that's modern. Okay, that's not your cup of coffee. Uh, it's, yeah, that's really, <laughs> that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And so they'll stick to the chocolates and caramels. But we've identified that for them. We've identified that in the tribe. We've identified that in the in the Pentagon. Yeah, right. There we go. So, so folks, we've got you know a good example of the Danes logo here. We've got finish, flavour, body, sweetness and aroma, and I think it's important, we, we probably should explore this a little bit further. So tell us about your award. So what, what, what did you win? Uh, what did Danes win, because it's Danes a team win? effort? Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the ACA, Australian International Coffee Awards, uh, we challenge ourselves in uh, presenting coffee and uh, uh, learning where the market is and uh, refining our, our products. And so we won this year in the, in the category of uh, milk-based espresso, uh, champion gold medal uh, for milk-based espresso. Wow. Uh, so the gold medal, so that helped us. Uh, yeah. And then um, also in cold brew. Uh, so we've been driving cold brew for the last few years, been playing with it. It's not a big thing at the moment because Australians are not black coffee nation. We're sort of mainly milk. Uh, so it was good to sort of win the milk one because 95, 90% of the uh, consumers drink it with milk. Uh, so that was a good big win. But uh, across the board, uh, lots of silvers and lots of bronzes. So is that uh, helps us to establish a credibility. And so, okay, this is the language, uh, but the credibility, okay, so this is how and where and what we have done within the categories, uh, so as to present uh, uh, a variety of brewing methods, a variety of ways that you drink at home, uh, so as that we cover it all, not just in the brewing methods, but in the flavors. Okay, so tasting competitions, the credibility of uh, who's making the coffee, who's tasting the coffee. Uh, there weren't enough experts out there to have credibility to, or have enough inspiration to put the coffee forward. Uh, so there, there wasn't the relevance back then. Uh, we had a market of literally back then that uh, said, what about the competition? Well, they got wine competitions. Uh, so isn't there a competition that you can put your coffee forward so as to do things? Yeah, but it, it's hit and miss and I don't trust them. I don't trust the judges, I don't trust the people making it, and uh, the organisers, they just didn't know what they were looking for. Just didn't, didn't know. It was just ignorance. And so where we were with our own competitions, not tasting competitions, but barista competitions, brewing competitions, and so part of the training uh, was to educate people or to help people uh, to knowledge share. And so one of the big things that our competitions that we ran uh, did was um, have all these baristas work together. Uh, work together, they worked against each other, but at the same time they were watching uh, someone present the best game that they've got. Uh, so it was that they wanted to win. We had $5,000 first prize back in 2001, uh, but uh, it allowed that knowledge sharing and it was a complement to our training. And so we can do the training, uh, but we attracted the best uh, so that I can learn as well, uh, because everyone learns. Um, I think that the training and also the World Bristol Competition back then created the standard uh, so as to then move on to what was a good coffee, uh, what are the measures of a good coffee, and so that uh, if they don't know how to measure a coffee, they don't know who the best barista is. And so the standards have come out of competition to assess it, 
And then after that, then the structure being uh, with how to profile a coffee and to measure and to judge a coffee. And then it came down to the organisers uh, knowing that this is a good judge, he knows what he's doing, okay, like we can build a team, we can build a format, and we can build a, uh, um, a, a marking report. Uh, and then so over the last half a dozen years, I've had enough confidence in that market or that industry and the uh, competition so as I say, yeah, I'm happy to book for Coffee Ford and uh, to see what they measure it at. And they are and have become uh, where the uh, industry is with what they believe to be a good coffee. Because you like Jocelyn's Gardens, you like fruits and berries. What's good? Is it good? Just because you don't like fruits and berries and you like chocolates and caramels, uh, then that's a bad coffee, that's a good coffee, that's not accurate. Uh, it's a balance in the coffee, so uh, is it clean? Is there defect, are there defects in it? Is it the roast? Is it the coffee? And so all these things have to come together, but we're, there's enough uh, maturity in the market now, uh, so is that people can identify that. It's a, still the top end, but that top end filtering down and even in this discussion it's filtering down so is that you're going to leave and think oh okay I've learned a little bit about uh, where it's come from where it is and so if you can find those roasters that uh, also understand it then I'm going to get a reasonable coffee or there's a better chance of getting a reasonable coffee and so the coffee experiences in the future are only going to get better. I thought today that it was the way that we started uh, it doesn't have a place where we are now uh, but back then where you could have the best coffee in the world, no one would even know. Uh, so it was really to help create an industry so as that they can appreciate what a good coffee was. And so, okay, this is a commodity coffee, this is a specialty coffee. What's the difference? Do you know? And so people still today, back then, it's just like, I can't tell the difference. Well, no, you can. Uh, and so, but if you put all these coffees on the table and when we're having a session, I don't have the confidence because I haven't done this before. Uh, but no, you know what you like. And so, do you like that? Oh, I think it's a bit bitter. Yeah, you're right. And what about this one? Yeah, it's clean, it's balanced. They're simple terms, simple words, but this one is a simple winner uh, when you don't know anything about coffee, but you know what you like. And so it's just an encouragement, just have faith. You know what you like. And then, what we did here uh, was to complement that with the training, same thing that I just said, bring the uh, competitors out that uh, wanted to uh, build their reputation because that's what they did. One of our winners, uh, he won one week and then two weeks later, he added 10 kilos to his uh, weekly kilos. People, he won, people wanted to see what he did, how he did it. Uh, it build their reputations and they still do that today. And so, uh, in, especially in the social media and the world and the society we live in today, everyone's their own brand. And so everybody back then, they wanted to build their own brand. Uh, there was no, um, uh, a best way to put it, uh, there was no accreditation and there still isn't any accreditation. And so the only accreditation they can put on their resumes is I've won this, or I came second in this, or I've competed here, I've competed there. Uh, giving them credibility, building their own brand, uh, giving them more prestige and credibility in the market. But the one thing that you did say there, which is um, you've got to take credit for, is um, in all of that conversation, if everything that I look at, the people that succeed and are able to keep innovating are the ones that go see their customer first. So I think the piece of advice that I give people is go see your customers first, then go to work. You know, it's the people that go into their office and sit down at their desk and then try and figure out the world's problems are not the ones that succeed. You know, it's definitely by leaving home, going to see your customer, you know, and, and that's what it is because you're constantly looking, you're constantly in the market and that's what's in a very tight, competitive, you know, saturated market, that's why you're still there, you know, and, and the ability to be innovative and quick to move is because you're actually with your customer every day and you're hearing what they want, what their needs, what their concerns are and you can come back and you can adjust that afternoon. That's right. But if you go to the office and then you go out to see the customer, you're tired, then you go home and then you forget what they wanted and you get into that vicious cycle. So I think that, you know, that would be my observation of 
you know, the two or three, three things that, that from what I know about this brand, that it's customer focus, 100% customer focus where a lot of other brands aren't. They think there's a lot of other brands out in the marketplace that think that they can just, that it's this thing where they create this product and they roast it and they make it and they put an online store and it just sells and they can, they can live an online life, you know? But it's not, it's not any organization, you know, any organization, any business, anything when you're truly passionate about your customers and, and your customers having amazing experience, then you're only gonna innovate because you're constantly listening to them, constantly watching and, and, and changing to suit. Because you're competitive, right? And it's not only that, you wanna deliver amazing service. Like you want, it, you want the product inside the bag to be amazing. And I think that's where you gotta take credit for your success is, is just turning up every day and, and, and the order in which you do that. It's, you know, that's the piece, you know, that's the winning piece because you see so many guys are like, oh, I'm going to be, I don't want to be in cafes anymore, so I'm going to become a roaster, you know, and then I'm just going to go to my factory every day and roast coffee, forgetting the customer. But you're going to the customer first, then you're coming back and you're saying, right, we're going to tweak it. Um, talk us through your process that was happening here this afternoon. You know, what, what, what's happening from a, you know, your, your, that process of innovation so you've, you've been out to see clients and customers this morning, you've come back and you were going through a, a, an amazing ceremony this afternoon at this very table. I wasn't here, but I heard about it. I've seen it before. Tell us about that. What's it called? What do you do? What are you looking for? What are you changing? Hey, what we had this afternoon was a, a tasting. So I differentiate a tasting with a cupping. Uh, a cupping first is uh, uh, putting coffees on the table and literally getting the spoon, slurping it and uh, assessing a coffee's uh, credibility or values or qualities or not. Uh, so as to the source, uh, what is, uh, what do we have asked for? And if it hits the mark and it's something that we bring into, into the company, uh, what we're doing uh, this afternoon was a, a, what we call a tasting, opposed to the cupping where we're tasting coffees through the espresso machine, we're tasting uh, the batch uh, or the filter, uh, and we're tasting the cold brews uh, so as to assess the uh, merit of um, uh, where our coffees still are and uh, how or what we need to do to continue to refine it, to polish it, to um, maintain that balance uh, so is that it's delivering to the customer uh, what we've been awarded for. Uh, and it's, uh, it's that constant journey of refining and polishing uh, so is that it's going out the way that I like it. What would be your recommendation for, you know, someone at home, how do they start their coffee journey? Like, you know, in terms of equipment, in terms of jumping on your online shop and maybe buying a few samples to try. Um, what's, it, what's that look like? They've got a kettle and they've got a jar of instant and we want them to change. What does that look like? Put your instant in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the journey is, well, where it goes to is that uh, understand what brewing means and understand what you're trying to achieve with the different brewing methods and the different roast levels uh, that uh, are better qualified for the different brewing methods. And so simplicity, you can go to filter. So the old pour over, the old filter is, uh, is easy, the plunge is easy, uh, it just requires the kettle. Uh, don't take the water up too high, but then it can go into a whole education process of uh, the temperature, uh, so time that it brews for, and the grind and freshness and the quality of the beans. And so step by step, the principles are, are the same uh, in any brewing method that you're going to use. And uh, the ones that sort of go through the journey and enjoy the journey, uh, they're gonna have a plunger, they're gonna have a stove top. Then they'll get into uh, the um, different methods of espresso. They might spend three and a half thousand dollars on an espresso machine Guilty. eventually. <laughs> uh, and then you've got your different grinders, you grind on demand, um, and uh, there's some real sophisticated levels of uh, grinders out there now. Then you've got weighing the shot, and you've got weighing uh, the amount of coffee going in and the amount of coffee coming out, so the precision, uh, so temperature coming out, or the water going through the coffee. And uh, 
So the level of sophistication is step by step, step by step, step by step. And uh, with our training and with their training, uh, a lot of it's on the internet now. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be building into our training uh, modules that you can go and visit. So there's a module on cleaning, there's a module on grinders, there's a module on brewing, there's modules on, on everything. There's, you can go to a stove top, uh, you can go to any other brewer that's out there so as that they can just be led to the uh, the basics and the fundamentals, but as soon as you get the fundamentals of what brewing's about, it goes through every brewing method. Cold brew doesn't have the heat, uh, but the brewing principles and the ratios are similar. But uh, you can vary the uh, the ratios uh, depending on the coffee. Exploring your coffee journey and and your life, what advice would you give to your thirty year old self? It makes you think about that where what we were talking about before is when you know too much, it's just like, well, do I really even want to do that? Yeah. And uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of it is just ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but now, giving the advice to your 30-year-old 30, 30 self, okay, so I've had the experience and uh, recreated, reinvented ourselves to this point, so I suppose what we would do is if I was giving the advice, I'd just give the advice of where not to go mm -hmm. and the directions that work. And um, it goes on business, it goes on quality, it goes on people, it goes on the whole lot. So what, what would be the advice, though? Uh, the, probably the best advice that just came to me now was that uh, get good advice. Mm -hmm. And get good advice and keep good coaches and keep wise counsel and maintain wise counsel and don't give it up. Awesome. I think I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think where could I give you my last piece of advice in terms of guidance is, is to be looking at your self-awareness and your influential skills. Because I think there's no debate around the fact that we are going to have to be better communicators on any platform. One-on-one, -on -one, face-to-face, -face, social media, down the lens of a camera, whatever it might be, there's no doubt about that. And so I think that you've got a unique advantage right now because you're asking the question, where's it going? Well, it will go to the people that are most influential. So it's the, our challenge as business leaders are to be self-aware and constantly challenging and improving our levels of communication and influence and what that looks like and, and being you know, and, and, and I guess the other thing in terms of what you've done with the branding is own our style, own our look and own our story. And my story, you know, people comment often like, why don't you wear a suit? You're in an industry that's full of suits. It's like, that's not me. I'm boots, jeans and a belt, you know, T-shirt or a shirt. You know, that's me. Um, and I show up the same way every day. I get out of the shower, I put my shirt on, I iron it. My wife laughs, right, because I iron my shirt every morning and then I roll my sleeves up. I iron my sleeves. I do. I iron it and I get every day. You won't see me with my shirt with my sleeves ever down. I, I'm, I roll my sleeves up. I'm ready to work. It's my thing. I roll my sleeves up, go to work. I'm, that's what I do. So that's me. And people laugh. Oh, you're the guy that rolls his sleeves up. You know? And I'm in the corporate environment in North Sydney. I'm the guy walking around with my sleeves rolled up. You know? um, it's just my thing. I don't know why I do it. I just do it. It's just, you know, you're ready to get into it. And it's just always been my thing. So. I think that's my you know, piece of advice that you're doing some great stuff and this is advice to anybody. You know, there's, a, there's, some, there's some great books out there. It's always the same message. Showing up every day and perfect practice makes perfect. You know, an amazing brand, 25 years, look where we are. You know, in, in terms of if you can't get it right after 25 years, you might as well give up. <laughs> still challenges. It is. Still challenges every day. So, one last question. Have you got any questions for the audience? So we've got an amazing audience. They've always got something to say. They're always making comments. From this audience to you, and you're out seeing customers every day, but from these guys, have you got a question for them? Any question, there's, they've always got great advice. Go ahead. They've always got great advice. It's the internet. People out there in the internet thinking about starting cafes, they're running businesses, they're working in businesses, they're people like Graham. How would you like to serve? How would you like us to serve you? Perfect. I like that. Thanks, mate. This has been Paul Jackson. We've been at Dane's Coffee. I want you to check out 
www.danes.com.au, that's D-A-N-E-S.com.au. You can grab amazing samples like this of all their incredible coffees. Read the guidelines, read the script. If you like something fruity, if you like something in the middle ground that's got the nuts and, and cinnamon type, type flavors. Is that right? Nuts and spices, there we go, I knew it was a spice. Uh, or the, the caramels and the chocolate end and the different levels of caramel and chocolate. Uh, make sure you're thinking about the type of coffee that you like to drink. And I guarantee the fruity flavors are fruity. No bitter aftertaste for those of you that are drinking instant coffee. Get rid of that, get yourself something great and make yourself a great brew. And we will see you next time right here on Best Practice TV. Bye for now. Thanks, mate. It's been good. Thank you.